So while there are electrical synapses, you know, and up to 20% actually um, in the adult vertebrate brain, um, you know, there was a huge debate you know, early in the 20th century about um, whether, you know, the majority of synapses were uh, electrical, were these sort of direct electrical connections involving these connections or inexons in, in vertebrates. Um, and this, this camp that believed that were called the sparkers uh, versus the, uh, those that were interested in or believed that, you know, there was some kind of a chemical that was being released from one neuron and then acting upon the next, you know, across these synaptic connections um, that was influencing um, information flow, you know, at synapses. Um, and these were called the supers, uh, as in soup, as in a chemical soup. And what's interesting is that there's a, there's a famous um, Austrian um, scientist named Otto Lowy, who, you know, um, conducted a very famous experiment involving, you know, the grisly uh, disassembly of frogs. So basically he, um, you know, took a, uh, a, a frog heart that was still beating, you know, removed from the frog, but with the vagus nerve, you know, which is the primary parasympathetic output to the upper viscera, you know, attached into a Petri dish. And then he had another heart beating in another Petri dish right next door, and he stimulated the vagus nerve. This is part of the parasympathetic output. So I want you to think for a moment, what does parasympathetic stimulation do, you know, to, you know, the, the heart rate? And I'll give you a moment. Okay, it slows down. Remember, sympathetic speeds it up, fight or flight, and parasympathetic will slow it down. Um, so he did that, and then he took a little eyedropper, and he took a little bit of fluid from around that first heart that had slowed down, and then he took it over and he dripped it you know, onto the beating heart in the second Petri dish. And the, the second heart also slowed down. So that was pretty good evidence that, you know, stimulation of the nerve, of the, of the vagus nerve, you know, released, um, you know, some kind of a chemical that then, you know, you could transfer it to another heart and you can generate the same sort of behavioral effect or functional effect on the heart, you'd slow it down. And, you know, um, this is the very first neurotransmitter that was discovered or identified. It was in the peripheral you know, nervous system. It was the parasympathetic you know, projection you know, to the heart. Um, and uh, Otto Lowy called it vagus stuff because uh, it was the stuff that came out of the vagus nerve, but it, we now know it as acetylcholine. An interesting aside about this whole story is how Otto Lowy apparently um, came up with the, uh, the idea for this rather grisly experiment in a dream. And then he, you know, like many dreams, he woke up and he knew he, he, he was pretty sure he had a fantastic idea, but he couldn't remember the details. So he actually grabbed a pad and paper, or, you know, pad and pen, put it by his bed, and then, you know, willed himself back to sleep and willed himself to, you know, to, to dream that dream again. And he got up and he wrote it down, and then he conducted that experiment. He, he basically uh, had a pretty big impact over our understanding about the chemical nature uh, of transmission at, at most synapses in our brain.